All right, guys, welcome back. I'm coming at you today with an $85 tool haul, and yes, another Craftsman bench grinder. So, a subscriber of the channel, Ready Set, um, his name's Kent, he sent me an email saying, Hey, Tom, just so you're aware, there's an estate sale not too far from you that has another grinder. So I said, All right, well, I'll have to check it out. Uh, when I went there, um, the, you know, that was the first item I went for when I got in and the guy wanted 30 bucks for it. And I said, done. I just needed to attach it, unattach it. So that's what I got amongst a lot of other items here and a lot of cool items that are uh, for the grinder. So let me lay it out for you and show you what I got. First item I want to show you just to kind of get out of the way here is I picked up a Dremel. Anytime I could get a Dremel at a fair price, I asked him what he wanted for this. He said he wanted 10 bucks for it, and I said that is just fine. And I grabbed it because it looks like it is basically brand new and very rarely used. Um, very similar to the ones I have, except it has a little bit more of a rubber molding on it. And this one is actually made in Mexico. Um, so this is, you know, a little bit newer one, same basic design with the variable speed, uh, but for 10 bucks, I couldn't pass that up. And it looks like it still has, you know, the cutoff wheels and all the attachments with it. The next big item I want to get out of the way is this large rafter or carpenter square. This is a 16 by 24 and take a look at this. How cool is this? This has got the old Craftsman crown logo on it. I had no idea what this was gonna be worth until I got it home and it is in pretty good shape. I cleaned it up, I just wiped the dust off it with an oily rag with a little WD-40 the back side, which is usually, you know, this was the side that was pretty much face down all the time. Definitely has a little bit more wear on it, but overall is in really good shape. And just out of curiosity, when I looked on eBay, I saw some of these going for all of them were over $40 plus uh, in this condition. I even seen some for more. Uh, so that was a great find, an unexpected find. And as you guys are aware, I've done a restoration on one of these Craftsman grinders that was a I think a quarter horse. This is a third horsepower. I recently just picked up a third horsepower one um, in a little bit rougher shape than this. Um, this one's in really nice shape, minus this here. That looks like I want to say something dropped on it, or they actually bent it to keep the glass from rattling was my other thought. But as similar as this looks, it is slightly different than my other um, one-third horsepower. And I'll show you what that is. It actually has a break on it. And it's a kind of a neat feature. And just taking a look at the year on it, clear as can be, February 1966. And this thing is just in fantastic condition. The badge is almost impeccable. All the metal is fantastic. I mean, this with a little bit of compound and wax, no rust on anything. This was in a doctor's house um, in his workshop. And it has, I mean, this is not going to need anything more than maybe just an oil of the bearings. I don't even think it needs that when you hear it run. Um, and maybe, you know, I do have an extra one of these uh, shields here. And maybe I'll take that off of the other one and put it on this one to make this one complete. I'll run it for you here in a minute, but just look at this. Even the lamp, everything is just impeccable. Just needs a really good cleaning. Um, and it's just going to be just a beautiful grinder. So let me run it for you and show you how smooth she is. I mean, this is not even bolted down or anything. <laughs> You shut it off. Look at that. It's got a break. I think that is just super neat. So I'm curious to see how that break works uh, when I take it apart. Um, there must be something in it that ca causes the motor to kind of slow down like that. So that'll be interesting. That is definitely different than all the other ones uh, that I have. That aside, the wheels look to be in great shape. And... It's got the Corsa one there. And like I was saying earlier, I got a lot of other accessories for bench grinders in this haul that I could use for all of the other bench grinders that I'm restoring. As I showed you before, I got a tubs full of items as well as a bag full of items. So I'm going to lay out the tub first. First item up I thought was really cool was this Craftsman sanding wheel. And what this is for, as you can see here, it could be used on a, a bench top, a bench saw, which I had no idea. 
Um, I thought that this would really only be used for um, something like this, you know, those big sanding type discs. So this is super heavy. Uh, it's so cool when you could get stuff in the original packaging like this. And I don't know if I'll ever use it, but I uh, figured I could always sell it on eBay. And they're getting a pretty good price for these. And what's so cool about this is that it also has the original sanding discs in it as well so this has a couple of fine ones in it a couple of coarse ones in it i took a quick peek in it some of them look lightly used and some of them were never used at all and i think they're getting about 25 dollars for them uh plus on e plus shipping on ebay so and then here's just a full can of acetone maybe used once it's like 90 percent full same thing with this stripper at least 90 percent full and those have got to be 10 bucks a pop each when you need them what i'm so excited about is i also got this brand new zep sprayer container uh and i have plenty of automatic transmission fluid so that'll make a great 50 50 uh, container. I'm currently using this small old oil can that I mix my 50-50 in and it causes me to be a little bit too stingy so now I could do about half of this and that'll allow me to soak my items and not be stingy. And just got all sorts of steel wool here. Not sure if it's, I think steel wool super cheap but I don't have any and I know it's great to clean up uh, stuff with so I got all sorts of uh, grits on it so I guess it goes from zero I got a fine, I got a three grade, so I'm sure that'll come in handy here in the near future. And here's some items that I'm really excited about. Um, just because I've been buying all these bench grinders lately and getting accessories for them to, re you know, to refinish them is not cheap. You could buy wire wheels and, you know, they're different qualities and, you know, a decent one's 15, 20 bucks. Still probably not made in the USA. I think my DeWalt one's pretty good but it's made overseas and um, the Harbor Freight ones, the cheap ones have their place as well. But I, I thought these were so cool. Look at this one, made in Germany. This is a six inch coarse brush, definitely old, has no barcode on it. Uh, so that's probably from the seventies. And then I got a fine one here. Um, and this one is made in the USA and that's a six inch uh, wire wheel as well. So. You know, when you, you know, I always like to compare prices and whatnot. You could buy these for three, four bucks now at Harbor Freight. Um, this was three or four bucks. This one was two seventy nine. They both are about two seventy nine, and that was, you know, thirty years ago. So the quality of those are going to be fantastic, and that'll be great as I restore these um, bench grinders. Um, now the next thing I got was these wheels, and I was so excited when I found these. I'm like USA grinding wheels. And it was, it was a dark pick. It was a place, you know, I had plenty of time. There wasn't people there for tools. And there's not a ton of tools. You'll see as I go through the rest of the stuff. Some neat items and some oddball tools and um, so forth. But it was not a ton of things that drove people there for tools. Um, so I had plenty of time. As you can see, I'm going through the whole shop here. Um, taking my sweet time and it was a lot of digging and finding and I found these on a shelf like that was way out of the way that I never uh, nobody was looking at and I was so excited so let me show you what I got here um, you know the first one I found was on the bottom here and I was like holy smokes there's a brand new craftsman made in the USA as I could see the old wheel on it and I figured you know what it looked like this was somebody replaced this um, you know, you could see here that it was lightly used, but it's still in great shape. Um, maybe somebody bought a fine and replaced it. I don't know, but uh, there was no reason to replace this one. There's plenty of meat on it, so that one could go back in service. So then I looked at the back just now, and it says made in Brazil. And I'm like, that is so odd. So not made in the U.S. That is, obviously, but the wheel that was originally in it was not made in the U.S.A. It was made in Brazil. And then sure enough, here's another one made in Brazil. And this is a brand new 36 grit uh, made in Brazil wheel. And it looks really nice. So I don't know what year they started making stuff in Brazil, but it's definitely older. Uh, does have a barcode on it, probably from the 90s would be my guess. Um, and then I found this one here. This is a brand new wheel as well, um, unfortunately. This one's actually made in China. The box is all shot, but as you can see here, brand new. And this is that was a 100 grit, I believe. And this one's a 60 grit, brand new, made in China. So a little bit disappointing. 
from the fact that I thought I had some really cool um, USA made stuff, maybe from the 90s. Uh, that being said, a quality imported wheel, even from China that I used in the past, are 18 to 20 bucks a pop. So I think I did really good um, just because of the value that they're getting for these. Yeah. Yep, and there it is. So from 1992, that wheel, and that was made in China. So that is a real long time ago for China for um, you know craftsmen to be exporting stuff out so probably the last time they made wheels in the US had to go back even to the 80s because it seemed like they went to Brazil prior to China so who knows maybe it had to be early 80s it could possibly be the last time they made a grinding wheel in the US and another nice angle square this is a, a nice aluminum one when you're doing a project it's always great to have a couple of these this is a johnson level tool i just love the branding on it i thought that was really neat and when you're working on a project you could have a couple of these laying around because you always want to have one handy and it seems like you're always looking for it um t bit um t bits just some extra bits and this i like because you could use it in your toolbox you could put it on the wall but these are all quality usa never used bits and you know not a complete set by any means but you can't find a lot of bits these days made in the usa and it's just really dirty more than anything tape measures love a good stanley you know i like usually use smaller ones but when you could get a nice 25 foot one made in the usa you could feel the quality and the weight of these and i love those power locks this i had never seen before this is a really cool uh type tape measure and look at that look how nice that is made in germany so the way it works is let's just assume this is the back wall and you're measuring to something you could read on top exactly how far it is in this case it's almost seven and a half inches and i think that is so cool it also has a level built into it and it seems like it's got something here so if you want to attack it maybe into the wall so it doesn't move um, on it as well it's got that on it as well and I thought that was really neat. I don't think it's super valuable, and I looked it up. Maybe they're getting like eight or ten dollars for it, but I do not have a tape measure like that, and I thought that would be neat in the collection. All right, so take a look at this new old stock Craftsman 12-inch 18 teeth hacksaw blade, and I love this. Look how nice that is. They seem like they got a little bit of you know surface rust on them, just from being in the package. Uh, but you'll never find those again so glad to have those uh, and then just some miscellaneous other stuff here a sock plug a, a spark plug socket uh champion made in the usa i just thought it was neat because it was in the package if it wasn't i probably wouldn't have taken it all right so just quickly showing you some other stuff really cool quarter inch masonry drill bit brand new in the box nice wood handle screwdriver has got a metal cap on it not sure to make or on i'll have to take a look at that one of these countersink type things a really nice clamp a ground you know this will let you know if your 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 light is grounded your your outlet i should say and then here i just got these leads and i just love when somebody makes something like this and you know i think that's so cool the way they did this with the alligator clips on it you could attach it to here and you could test stuff when i and then when i use this i'll be so glad that i got to use that and i'm sure this gentleman will be so glad when he sees me using it wherever he is now All right and then the last item i got was this shop workbench and check out how cool this thing is this measures 31 inches from the base to the top so it'll work great at a workbench height um, it does have a slight little crack in it um, i might have to glue it at some point but that's not a big deal spins all the way around has really heavy duty hardware um, underneath it as well uh, so i think this was just a great score um, for the price of probably i think i paid an extra five dollars for it so i paid 85 dollars for everything all right guys giving you one last look at everything sorry for the delay in between videos as i was on vacation I'll add a couple of little clips to the end, maybe some pictures, and you can see where I was. So one last look here. Got some really nice grinding wheels, four of them. Unfortunately, not all made in the USA, but they'll definitely come in handy. The great grinder itself. One drawback to this grinder was it did have the tray, the original tray that goes in there that you could put the water in, and 
it got lost somewhere between me getting it out of the basement and to my car, unfortunately. Some nice USA made wire wheels. Look at that, the 5050s ready to go. Got the acetone and the spray bottle there. Some nice Craftsman vintage stuff back there. A Dremel tool, it can't beat that. I mean, they're going for good money these days, even the Chinese made ones and all this other miscellaneous goodies there. So I think I did pretty good for my $85. Love those Stanley and that German made tape measure there. The old vintage Craftsman logo on the hacksaw blades and some consumables back there, which will always come in handy. So thanks for watching, and I will see you shortly in the next one. in the rod, don't lose him. That's a big one. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's a that's nice pretty. one. Wow. Oh, wow. That's an eight-year-old fish right there.